Hello, this is Spartan Commander, and it's the 279th Rome Total War Brotherhood game that I've put onto YouTube. Uh, just before I introduce the teams, I'd just like to say that one of the main reasons I do these battle videos is trying to encourage newer players onto Rome Total War. Um, I think Rome Total War now is about 13 years old, and that makes RTW an old girl now, and I think the old girl's starting to need a bit of help to keep her going. And what I was wondering was, is, is, is there any websites that you think you might be able to, we, we might be able to share these battle videos on? Um, and hopefully people seeing these battles would think, whoa, what a good game. And, um, and maybe give RTW uh, a try. I'm just thinking that there might be a new generation of um, gamers out there that's never even looked at RTW. And uh, maybe if they give it a try, um, they might just uh, get to like it as much as what we've done. Um, I know it's, um, <clears throat> as I said, 13 years old, but I still think it's a great game. And when you see the battles that we um, that we play, you can see we're still having great games as well. So as I say, if you can um, think of any um, websites that maybe we could share these uh, these battles on, um, just to see if we can get uh, encourage some newer players on to RTW, then uh, that would be great. And uh, like uh, like a bit of teamwork with all of us working together, we might be able to just do that. Okay, the. Um, the team I'm in today consists of a Brotherhood mem member Legion 22, who has bought the Rome Bruto faction. Just like to draw your attention to um, his archers there. He's got four um, um, auxiliary archers there, and just look at the upgrades. Can you see he's got eight upgrades on his archers? So that's two experience stripes, gold shield, gold attack. So that's a lot of upgrades to put on his archers. And as I say, he's got four archer units there, and if you notice, he's got 14 infantry, uh, including an eagle unit, but only two cavalry. As you can see, he's got his eagle unit there to give more morale to his troops, as well as his um, infantry general. But to, as I say, only two cavalry and 14 infantry and four archers. So that's kind of a custom army. Is that giving you a clue on what type of factions we are fighting? What's, uh, what factions are kind of on the other team? Let's say when you see a custom army like that, you can usually guess what um, what type of factions we're going to be facing. Our next teammate is a Brotherhood member Axilius, who has bought the Rome Julio faction. Now, if you count Axilius's infantry units there, he's got 17 infantry units. No cavalry, no archers, 17 infantry units are urban cohorts. So, does that give you um, an even better... Um, guess at what type of factions we're facing in this battle. As you can see with his army and Legion 22 army there. Um, so as I say, 17 infantry, no cavalry in that uh, particular army. And then our third teammate is uh, Brotherhood member JGP. If you notice here, he's bought uh, four archer units. Look at the upgrades he's put on his archers. Seven upgrades. So that's an experienced strike, gold shield, gold attack. Very serious archers there, but he's only got 10 infantry. So he's got four archers, 10 infantry, and six cavalry. Once again, a custom built army for this particular battle. So, um, once again, my guess is that uh, a lot of you are probably guessing what type of factions we're going to be fighting. And then our fourth teammate is myself, Spartan Commander, who has unusually bought the Macedon faction. Uh, now, this is one of my um, resurrected old armies, but we'll talk about that a bit later on. So, there's our team there. Um, you wait till you see the other team. It's got the ingredients to be a great battle, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, at this stage of the battle, I thought we'd have a look at this old Mastodon army of mine. I remember six or seven years ago, the Brotherhood, I've noticed, was starting to lose battles to teams that were bringing a lot of pike factions, especially the Greek cities. So I remember after one of the defeats, I went into the custom part of the game and looked at Carthage and Macedon as possible counters to the Greek city factions. And I made, I think it was three experimental Carthage armies and three experimental Macedon armies. And I tried them over the weeks. And I've managed to whittle them down to one army in the Carthage um, uh, faction and one ar um, army in the Mastodon faction there that, uh, that kind of suits me when I go up against Greek cities. As you can see, there's 16 pike units there, all well upgraded. 
um, and in a block formation. Now, people that bring counter Greek city factions use their own type of formations that suits them to actually um, fight the Greek cities. But this old fashioned block formation seems to suit my um, way of fighting, if you like, with pikes. It's a really solid formation, really great in depth. And if I get attacked from the flanks, I've got so many infantry in the rear echelons of that uh, formation, I can send them out to counter any flank attacks there. And also I've got four Cretan archers. Now the Cretan archers there I believe are essential for large pike units that are very susceptible to archer damage. Those Cretan archers can give me a lot of cover fire against enemy archers. So as I say, it's a very old army, maybe seven or eight years old. Um, it's an army that I built specifically to fight the Greek cities. And it'll be interesting to see how, how good this resurrected army does on a modern day battlefield. And here is the other team. We have RD, RTW player Argentina Tut, who has bought the um, Pontus faction. Now, this is Tut's um, faction of choice on the 31k battlefield Pontus. And as you can see here, he's got two chariot archers um, that he uses very well. He puts them in the Canterbury Circle. Foot archers hardly do any damage to them, and they really can mess up um, the enemy team, shooting them in the flank or doing their archers in. He's also got four heavy um, scythed uh, chariots there. Now these guys are extremely um, dangerous and they do a lot of damage but they can run amok. And as we've seen in other battle videos, if they run amok they become uh, a menace to both friend and foe alike. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how well these chariots do. And strangely enough when they run amok they seem to do more damage um, than they do um, in a normal kind of phase like so. That's, uh, we'll see how well they do during the course of the battle. And I believe that um, he's got, uh, there he's got uh, about uh, 14 pike units there as well. Those long pikes there. Let's have a look at the upgrades on them. I say got seven upgrades, which is an experienced stripe, gold shield, gold attack. But no archers and no cavalry. Just the uh, the four heavy chariots, the two chariot archers, and I say 14 pike units there. But that is um, Tut's um, faction of choice for the 31k battlefield. And as we've seen in other battle videos, he handles Pontus extremely well. Okay, their next teammate is an RTW player that a lot of you will know, Craterus. Very good, a 31k player, and very good with a Greek city faction as well. And as you see here, uh, I think Craterus has got 14 Spartan units and one uh, armoured hoplite unit there which he uses as a pilot shield by the looks of it and he's got three of the cheap archers he hasn't spent his money on expensive cretan archers but he's got three of the cheap archers there so i think that's a, that's a pretty good solid army there i think whenever you see 14 spartan units there you always know you're in for a challenge and then we have the second greek city uh, faction bought here and this is bought by iow and by oryx and by oryx here is bought um, 15 it looks like Spartan units to me um, that's a pretty solid uh, solid lot of Spartans there don't forget they've got excellent morale and two hit points and excellent specifications as well um, so that looks a, a pretty good army to me and also if you notice he's got five of the long-range Cretan archers so um, that certainly do a, a lot of damage but I just like to draw your attention here to the upgrades on these uh, Spartans here can you see They've only got four upgrades on. Um, now, I personally think that for Spartans, they need at least a gold shield on them. Um, even with their great specifications and two hit points, I think gold shield is quite essential to keep them alive as long as possible, especially when they get into the actual nitty-gritty of the toe-to-toe um, -to -toe combat. So it'll be interesting to see how well these um, Spartan units do during the uh, the course of the battle. But as I say, he's got 15 of those Spartan units, um, so... It should be interesting to see uh, to see how well they do. And as I say, he's got those five Cretan archers as well. So that army looks pretty tough to me. As we know, um, Ambi is a really good player and really good with uh, with the Pike factions too. So two Greek city factions there. It's going to be a real challenge. And then their third, uh, sorry, their fourth teammate is RTW player Aaron, who has bought the Rome Scipio faction. Now, to be honest, I don't know much about Aaron. But his army looks pretty solid there. He's got 13 um, urban cohorts and 6 Praetorian cavalry. He's got a pilot shield unit at the front. So it looks a pretty good solid army to me. Um, so anyway, when you're looking at that team there, you've got two Greek city factions and Pontus and a Rome faction here. So I think this uh, it's got the ingredients looking at these, uh, these players here to battle. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. 
And as I say, fighting one Greek cities is hard enough, but fighting two is a real challenge. This should be a great one to watch. Okay, at this stage of the battle, you can see at the very, very early stage of the battle here, you can see that I'm moving my Mastodon army away from those um, Pontus chariots there. I know that um, Tut uses those Pontus chariots very well right from the beginning of the battle. He likes to get close up to soft targets like enemy archers or the flank of our uh, enemy's team there. And he can start using those, um, those archers very effectively. If you notice here I'm pulling my archers back as well as I say they are a soft target and they can be um, shot down by those uh, those chariot archers when they go into that Canterbury circle. You can see that um, I think that one um, archer unit that I've got there has already been reduced to 66 men from that, uh, those, that uh, chariot archer and that Canterbury circle there. Just pause the game for a second there, just to um, have a look at Axilius, his uh, infantry there. If you notice there, he's not hasn't got a normal uh, infantry formation. He hasn't got any uh, pilot shield units at the front um, because he's just he's just got those. Um, I think it's seventeen infantry units there, just to um, face the Greek city. So of course he doesn't need um, a pilot shield unit on the front there. Or if you notice that the um, chariot archers are getting closer there, and they're starting to do that um, that Canterbury circle, shooting into the flank of uh, of my um, by point. Let's just pause the game for a second. As I say, if you look at Auxilius' uh, infantry there, as I say, no pilot shield unit there, just 17 um, infantry. As I say, his intention is just to take on that one of those Greek city armies there. He knows that I'm going to take on one of the Greek cities, and he's going to take on the other. There with those uh, with that amount of infantry, so of course he doesn't need a uh, a pilot shield there. As you can see legions over on the right flank there, ready to face the uh, enemy Scipii um, army. So that should be interesting on the right flank. And as you can see there, um, a lot of archers um, in use at the moment. And you can see that JGP has got his SBQR troops out towards the Pontus um, faction there. So. Um, at this very early stage of the battle, you can see exactly what's uh, what's happening here. They say that um, those uh, chariot archers over on our left flank have formed a Canterbury circle and be shooting into a lot of our archers there. They see with my mast on pointman because they're so susceptible to uh, to archer fire. I like to keep them back a little bit from the main battle line. But if you notice, my uh, that pike uh, formation is actually in the battle line with JGP on my left. There's JGP putting some of his units into Testudo. Newer players to RTW might not have seen a Testudo in uh, up close when it's actually going into formation there. So as you saw there, that's a good solid defensive formation there. It gives good protection all the way around there. Uh, there is a little bit susceptible at the rear, but the flanks and the front are very well protected there, especially against archer fire. So there you go, that's the... Um, <coughs> that's the uh, the battle so far. Be interested to see what happens when the uh, armies get closer together. Okay, at this stage of the battle here, you can see a lot of pilot exchanging being done between Legion 22's infantry and the enemy Scipii infantry. There, it's actually kind of almost raining pilots down here. There's so many pilots being thrown in, um, especially from the Scipii side there. It looks like the, the Scipio troops are really peppering um, Legion uh, 22's forward pilot shield units there. It looks to me like the Scipio player here, the, the way that he's advanced, the way he's throwing those pilots, I think he could be extremely aggressive here. Let's just pause the game for a second and take stock of exactly what's going on. As you can see, Legion 22 is facing this wide um, formation Scipio army. You've got the, uh, the Greek cities facing Exilius there. Or one of the Greek cities facing Exilius' uh, infantry formation there. You can see that I'm facing the other 
uh, Greek city um, faction there and you can see that JGP with his SBQR unit is facing the Pontus faction there over on the left flank and you can see a lot of chariots at the back there and if you notice that uh, Tut's got his uh, B army those four point units at the rear um, able to push in anywhere on the battlefield if needed but I got a feeling that, that uh, this um, Scipio player on the right here this Aaron seems to be very aggressive so I got a feeling the uh, the battle could kick off on this uh, this right flank here Yep, as you can see here, Aaron being very aggressive, attacking with his infantry there. Hoping to take out those two forward units of Legion 22's Brutio infantry. I've always said on um, when we've played um, these these games and you've, you've watched other battle videos, if you're the attacking player, then you, you have grabbed the initiative. You are the... Uh, the one that um, make the moves and the enemy can only react to you the enemy can only kind of dance to your tune but when you do attack you have to have um, kind of uh, controlled aggression and kind of um, be aware of what's happening uh, around the battlefield as well so it'll be interesting to see how well this Scipii um, player does attacking um, Legion 22's Brutio army here I must say, whenever you um, you go up against one Greek city faction with a good general, you know you're in uh, in for a challenge. But when you've got two Greek city factions, both commanded by good generals, you know that uh, we're in for a kind of a real challenge here. But as I say, on this right flank, the uh, the enemy Scipii player here has been very aggressive. And is now attacking um, <coughs> two of Legion 22's um, forward units there that have been put into Testudo. very aggressive there as you can see he's moving those Scipio units forward even more now throwing even more Scipio units into the fray to attack those two units in Testudo now those units in Testudo will take a lot of breaking now because they are actually in Testudo and if you notice he's put three units behind those two engaged units into Testudo as well and this is going to tire out those Scipio infantry that are attacking. Right, can you see Legion 22 now is bringing in a couple of his Brutii, those two Brutio cavalry units of his. And bang, as that cavalry hits straight into those engaged enemy Scipio troops. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if the Scipio general threw in more infantry. There you go. Can you see that he's throwing in more infantry now into the attack? Let's just pause the game for a second. Right, if you can see all those infantry going in there on those two, attacking those two Testudo units. Now, that Scipio infantry, if it's not careful, it's almost blobbing. And blobbed infantry, that's, that's like what you can see there, like a lot, a big blob of infantry is very susceptible to routing. Because they're, they're so intermingled that once you start units getting to rout, then you can find uh, blobbed infantry can rout quite quickly. And as you can see there, that is turning into a little bit of a blob there with all that infantry attacking. If you notice his teammate, his Greek city's teammate, is bringing over some units to help him there. You see that uh, Ambi's bringing over some of his units. I think he's, what's that, two, four, about eight Spartan units he's bringing over to support his ally in the attack on our right flank. So uh, with those Greek city units pushing, as well as that Scipio, those Scipio units pushing, then um, our right flank there could be under a lot of um, a lot of pressure. So it's uh, nice teamwork there by Ambi bringing over um, eight of his Spartan units there to help his ally. As I say, um, when you play in team battles, that's just what it is—a team battle. You help each other out, and as I say, the um, the aggressive attacking um, tactics of the Scipio player there are now backed up by. Uh, Greek city Spartan units there could be a real problem on our right flank. Can you notice that our um, our teammate Axilius with the red Julio army, remember those 17 um, herb units? He's bringing um, some reinforcements over to this right flank to help reinforce Legion 22's Brutii, uh, green Brutii infantry here against the double-edged attack of the enemy Scipii and those Greek city units. Nice bit of teamwork there by Axilius. Right, can you notice that Scipio um, General there is charging his cavalry through some of his cavalry, going through 
some of his allies Greek city units now those Greek city units had their spears down there engaging the enemy and you remember what we've talked about in other battle videos if you charge your cavalry through allied pikes when the pikes are down you will lose a lot of your cavalry remember friendly pikes kill friendly cavalry okay let's pause again for a second take stock of exactly what's happening as you can see here there's a lot of pressure on our right flank with those eight spartan units and the whole of the scipii army attacking aggressively on our right flank let's say exilius has brought some of his julio units across here to reinforce our right flank and it'll be interesting to see if we can hold there against this aggressive attack um by the enemy i can see that uh, legion 22's eagle unit has gone i see his eagle unit has been routed so that's a big lump of morale gone from his army there um as you move up further up the battlefield can you see i'm moving my macedon army over to our right flank now there's a reason i'm doing that and i'll explain that to you in a second um i'm running that over there as you can see there um JGP is facing uh, the Pontus army there and some elements of Greek cities there. But I'm running this Mastodon army over here for a reason. And uh, I'll show you what that is in a minute. But as you can see, our right flank is under a heck of a lot of pressure here with the enemy moving in. You can see more Greek city units moving into the right centre now, putting more pressure onto the um, our uh, Julii alloy there right can you see can you just have a look at the enemy troops here? can you see what they're saying there um only a fool could lose this battle okay unhappy at taking casualties glad to see enemy routing um and see uh glad to see enemy routing there and glad to see enemy routing can you see i'm bringing my mastodon army here and this mastodon this pike army consists of about 1900 troops okay now I've, I've suffered a, a little bit of archer damage but there's the best part of 1900 infantry coming over here okay over to this side of the battlefield right now let's have a look at what the enemy troops are saying now can you see they're now saying distraught over the number of enemies um distraught over the enemy uh, the number of enemies distraught over the enemy of, uh, number of enemies there okay so that means their morale is dropped in like a stone now um, simply because, can you see all those units just saying distraught uh, over the number of troops? Just because I've brought nearly 1,900 troops over to this part of the battlefield. Now what I'm going to do, is I'm, my plan is just to run my mace army forward with the pikes up. The moment I touch the front elements of the enemy team, I'm going to put my pikes down. And what I'm hoping is, as the pikes go down, it's going to cause so many casualties, with their morale being so low at distraught at the enemy numbers, that I'm hoping I'm going to rout a big chunk of this uh, this enemy army including those spartan units okay so i've got my pikes up i'm going to run forward i'm just going to touch the front of the enemy line and then i'm going to put the pikes down bang the pikes go down okay now remember that they were distraught at the amount of enemy numbers there and can you see how the units are starting to round I've just run forward and put the pikes down and just doing that has caused those tired units those tired fighting units because their morale was so low to rout so where our right flank was being aggressively attacked there by both Greek cities and Scipii by just running my army over there now and just moving forward with that 1900 approximate troops there we have now routed both the uh, Scipii and the Greek city units that were attacking us. Most of the Greek city units that were attacking us on that right flank. And I just wanted to show new players that that numbers of troops can drop the morale. Big numbers of troops can drop morale of the enemy troops around them. And then if you attack, you can then kind of get um, uh, a bit of a route there. As you can see, JGP with his SPQR army there, he's facing... What I think he's facing is the Pontus army there. He wants to shadow the Pontus army. And if the Pontus army moves over to the right now to support, to try and shore up um, their flank over there, then my guess is that JGP will follow that army. But bear in mind, if he does that, those Greek city units there could do a right flank in action onto our allies' um, <coughs> Julii infantry there. So I'll be interested to see what actually happens. Okay, so you can see that most of the, uh, the Scipii and those Greek city units that are over there att viciously attacking our right flank now have been routed by um, a combination 
of teamwork there by um, by our uh, by our team. And so now I'm going to start moving my my units over from right to left towards the the enemy team there. Now, if you notice, if you notice over at the uh, the back of the enemy, can you see the Pontus Pikeman running over to our right flank and JGP shadowing them with his SPQR army? But by doing that now, he's kind of left. Um, our left flank a little bit in the open there and Exilius is going to have to cover the left flank there with his Julia units. Now if you notice here JGP had his cavalry ready to charge in but if you notice a touch brought his chariots in and bang as those chariots hit. Don't forget those chariots have got a fear factor and have got really good attacking specifications there and it wouldn't surprise me if they routed most of JGP's cavalry there with a nice hit there in the flank and rear. A lot of JGP's um, cavalry uh, were killed there but if you notice a couple of those chariot units have now run amok so they will be a menace to both friend and foe alike. As you can see here they suffered a lot of casualties and rather than just leave the battlefield like most units they've run amok so as I say both friend and foe alike will have to avoid these guys like the plague really if they can because they cause so much damage. As you can see here, um, JGP is bringing his SPQR unit round. My guess is he's going to try and flank the Pontus army there. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm just pushing forward with my Mastodon pikemen. Now both Pontus and Mastodon have got the long pikes, but Mastodon's got a slight advantage with more defence. As you can see over on our left flank here, Exilius has had to um, use a lot of his Julia units now to face a flanking attack by the Greek city's army as well as an um, attack on the front of his units there. As you can see you've got basically uh, most of the Pontus army is intact there um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. And so you can see JGP bringing his SPQR units over. Now what I'm doing now I'm attacking the two Pontus units that are in front of me uh, with a view to try and start going left towards those Greek city units. If you notice that Legion 22 has moved over from our right flank with his Brutii troops there to help Exilius's Julii army there against those Greek city units. Once again, nice teamwork. There has been a heck of a lot of great teamwork in this battle as I'm sure you have noticed here. Great supporting work by both teams. Okay, if you notice that some of the Pontus pikemen are now moving into position to attack my Macedon pikemen there. JGP is throwing a lot of pilers into those attacking Pontus troops. And as you can see there, there's um, an aggressive attack by, uh, by Pontus. Right, let's just uh, pause the game for a second to take stock of exactly what's happening. As you can see here, JGP's SPQ army there. What he would like to do is probably um, route those two units in front of him and get round the flank of the Pontus army or even round the rear if he could. Um, as you can see with my Mastodon army I'm pushing forward towards Pontus but I'm actually edging over to the left because I can see that Greek city's general can you see that Greek city's general there now that would be a target for me if I can start pushing units up take out that Pontus unit in, in, by the side of him and then go for that Greek city's general meanwhile um, there's a lot of pressure on our um, Julii ally there with those Greek cities pushing in and with all those uh, the great attacking specifications of Greek cities there, it wouldn't surprise me if he started to route a lot more of our Julii ally there. But nice teamwork there by Legion, bringing his Brutii army over to support um, Auxilius' Julio army there. So there's an overview of the battle as it stands at the moment. As you can see a lot of pressure here by Pontus trying to attack my Macedon units there. But as I say, um, I think both Pontus and Macedon have got the same length pikes, but I believe Macedon have got better defence than, uh, than Pontus. So um, my guess is here that Macedon could well prevail here against Pontus. But if you notice here, I'm starting to move units over towards the left there, edging towards that Greek city general. I really would like to get him. If I can get him, then even though the Greeks have got great morale, um, their morale will drop. Right, if you notice, can you see my general unit at the back of my formation? A couple of units I've upped pikes and are now running forward towards that Greek city's general. 
Now I've got Maston pike units already engaging that Pontus pike unit that's by the Greek city's general. So those units that I've just upped pikes and ran up to now, I'll get as close to that general as I can and then down pikes and start pushing towards him. That's my goal there, to try and take out that Greek city general. Can you see the two enemy Scipio infantry units that are fighting in front of him? They've both been routed now by that attack. General is slain, and now his men fear us. It is Just to say, to look at JGP here going around the flank and the rear. A nice tactical move there. Nice. Let's just pause again for a second there, moving around the rear. See, in, in RTW, it's not all about banging on the barricaded front door. When you can slip down the alley and get round the back, and, like, and they might find the back doors open. So that's what he's doing there. He's taking his units round to the weakest part of the enemy there, the rear. That's a nice little move there by JGP. Very tactical. As you can see here, my Maston units are pushing out against those Pontus units. I see there's another Greek city's unit coming in behind one of the Pontus units there to support. Um, so it is really touch and go here with those pike units. But looking at the numbers of my Macedon pikes against those Pontus pikes there, we should be um, we should be okay. As I say, you've got Exilius's Red Julii Army and Legion 22's Green Army fighting over on the left against the Greek cities. But as I say, I'm pushing that those Macedon forces towards that Greek city's general. Looking to kill him, lowering the morale of those Greek city troops. Right, there you go. We've routed that Greek city's general now, or even killed him. And that's exactly what I wanted to do with my Macedon pikemen, so the morale of his troops will now drop. Now you can see that JGP's got his SPQR cavalry around the back. My guess is going to go straight into the back of that Pontus general. Remember, the rear is the weakest part of any uh, unit on RTW. And if you can get into the back of Pike, sir, you can see those two cavalry units, and bang, as that cavalry goes in. And so that's a hammer and anvil attack. My Macedon um, pikemen are the anvil, and those SBQR cavalry and infantry there with a the hammer there. And it wouldn't surprise me if that Pontus general, there you go, the Pontus general is just routed. Now, Pontus morale is not very good anyway. And so the general's been killed, so their morale will now drop like a stone. So I'm now, if you notice here, I'm moving more pike units over to engage those Greek city units. See what I'm going to do here with these units that are running. I've upped pikes. I've run round to the flank of those Greek city units. And I'm now going to push in from the flank with my long piked a Macedon um, pikeman there. Now he flees the field like a coward. If you notice that both um, Auxilius, JGP and uh, Legion 22 have come round the flank of the Greek cities and are now charging in behind. Um, they know that that's the weakest part of the Greek city units there and if they can just get in behind. There's JGP charging two of his cavalry units in as well, hoping that the shock of the impact of that will kind of... Um, cause a lot of units to rout. That's a nice cavalry hit. Can you see I'm taking these pike units even further around the rear to attack the rear of those Greek cities. It wouldn't surprise me now that uh, general has routed if the whole Greek city... There you go. Can you see all the Greek city units basically now have routed. And our team um, seems to have... Uh, Managed to uh, to win the, win the battle here. The leader of the Allies has been slain. As said earlier, when you when we looked across the battlefield and we saw um, not just people. one Greek city's army commanded by a good general, but two Greek city's armies commanded by two great generals, Pontus um, commanded by Tut, who we know is a really fantastic um, Pontus general, and then a good solid Roman army as well um, facing us. We knew we were in for a challenge, so um, I think uh, with great teamwork and great tactics here, our team, as I say, managed to um, to go on to uh, to win the battle here. It wouldn't surprise me if those um, Cretan Archer generals kind of um, admitted defeat. There you go, he's just admitted defeat. And uh, as I say, our um, <coughs> our team seems to have um, gone on to uh, to win the battle here. <coughs> Okay, first thing I'd like to say is really, really well played to everybody in the game there. Um, I must say, um, I wasn't expecting it to be a clear victory. I thought it would have been a close victory, bearing in mind the, um, 
the generals and the factions that we were fighting there. So to get a clear victory, I think, was um, was pretty good. So really well done to Aaron for his aggressive attacking on that flank. And well done to Ambi for backing him up with his Spartans. And really well done to Craterus and Argentina Tut. As I say, I wasn't expecting it to be a clear victory. Um, I thought it would have been a bit closer than that. So um, really well done to the enemy team there. And really well done to JGP. Axilius and Legion 22. Um, nice teamwork, really well played, guys. I managed to get quite good kills in this um, in this battle. But did you see how um, bringing 1,900 troops over to a certain part of the battlefield just made the, the troops, the enemy troops, distraught by enemy numbers, dropping their morale and making them right to rout. So new players watching this, I hope you noticed um, notice how well that kind of worked with the uh, the numbers in that army. Um, so as I say, uh, really well done to um, JGP, Axilius and Legion 22 and well done to the, uh, the enemy team as well. It's a great battle to be in. Let's just look at the um, battle statistics of my, uh, my army there. I don't think the pikemen did um, really fantastically. They did okay. But it's such a big army that you can afford to lose a lot of troops um, and still kind of help your team out a lot. Because it's such a massive army, you know, you can lose so many it, it really doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. So there you go. Um, I hope you enjoyed that battle. It was nice to see so many factions. Greek cities, Pontus, Macedon as well as Rome. And I thought it was quite an exciting battle there. And I hope you enjoyed it. This is Spark Commander saying I look forward to seeing you soon. And bye for now.